Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel, and I'm reading through the SF Masterworks. Land Under England by Joseph O'Neill, 1935. Yes, 1935. Let me just read from the back of the book for you. While searching for his missing father, Anthony Julian embarks on a terrifying journey into the Earth's interior. There he discovers a subterranean world where descendants of the Roman army suffer under a totalitarian regime in which individualism is completely obliterated by telepathic means. Refusing to join this rigidly controlled society, Anthony must fight to save his father and find a route to the surface, or perish. Let's flesh that out a little bit. The novel opens with Anthony's father returning from World War I. He is suffering from shell shock, or PTSD as we know it now. There's a legend in this family that there's a world beneath a field along Hadrian's Wall that there's an entrance to an immense cavern, another world, a world populated by the descendants of ancient Romans. This is along the lines of some other popular literature of that time. You might think of Jules Verne's Journey to the Center of the Earth, or even H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. And of course, in the pulps, we have Edgar Rice Burroughs exploring at the Earth's core. But this is no pulp tale. This is a serious allegory. Let me read the bio on the back of the book. Joseph O'Neill, 1878 to 1952. Joseph O'Neill was an Irish educationist and author. He worked as the permanent secretary to the Department of Education, Irish Free State, between 1923 and 1944. Although not strictly an SF writer, O'Neill used SF instruments to make cultural and political points with great eloquence. Land Under England, about an underground world where citizens are controlled by telepathy, is a satire on Hitlerian totalitarianism. Try saying that tongue twister five times fast. Remember, this novel is published in 1935. This is before World War II. World War I has ended, and the League of Nations is established on January 10, 1920, at the Paris Peace Conference. This is the forerunner to the United Nations. The failures of the League in the 1930s are evident with the rise of Hitler. Britain and France ignored the League in their efforts to appease Hitler. In trying to avoid war, they arguably led to the outbreak of the Second World War. This tension is the context for the writing of Land Under England. Anthony Julian is not only trying to find his father under England, he's trying to find his father through the PTSD that he has suffered. But the bigger allegory is these Romans that he finds underneath the earth. It's dimly lit by phosphorescence of different sources and fires and torches. In surviving centuries underground, they've come to have a telepathy They've become a hive mind, workers with vacant eyes, their souls virtually gone in service to the leaders, men who cannot think for themselves. Will Anthony Julian find his father? Will his father still be an individual, or will he be incorporated into this hive mind? This is definitely a novel of its political time. It is adventure, world building, and commentary. Contemporary readers may find it a little slow going, but I did find it very interesting. I would say this is closer to H.G. Wells than it would be to Edgar Rice Burroughs. I give this allegory 7 out of 10. So I'm curious, have you read Land Under England? Do you like novels that are obvious allegories? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.